call this meeting to order of the Floresville City Council regular meeting for August the 9th, 2018, 6 p.m. Uh, please rise for our invocation with Mr. Bob Herndon, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance and Texas Pledge. Let us pray. I'm going to express this heavenly Father and Mary, we're so thankful for this day and so uh, thankful for our city and our pretty nice that we conduct ourselves in a professional manner. And also, Lord, find out our land is forced to dry, and if it be thou will, we ask that you send us some rain and we know you go in your time. Again, thank you again for this day and for our meeting tonight. Ask all of these things in your precious name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. We do have a form for tonight's meeting in attendance, Council, Councilman David Johns. Councilman Gloria Cantu, myself, Sissy Gonzalez Dimple, Councilman Nick Nixon, and Councilman Gerard Jimenez. Thank you so much. I do open the floor to any citizens' comments. This is an opportunity to, uh, for any citizen who has a comment, we offer five minutes. Uh, anyone that, if you would raise your hand or come up to the podium, please state your name, and you've got five minutes. Thanks, Mayor. My name is Mick Wade. I live at uh, 603 F Street in, in Floresville. Um, I'm fairly new to the community, but uh, I've always, like I said last time, I've always tried to stay uh, concerned and, and uh, go to city council meetings and kind of see what's going on. But uh, I recently got the uh, City of Floresville uh, fiscal year end statement, um, September 30th, 2017. And on page five, there's some uh, information about the financial highlights. And like I talked about last time, uh, to me, it's kind of it's concerning when I get this and I see wording like return the city to financial stability, uh, improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. That's on page five, and then on page ten, when I get, got a little bit further into it. Uh, it says the general fund balance decreased by 104,000 as of September the 30th, leading to an even more urgent need for council and staff to properly implement the insolvency turnaround plan. You know, when I hear words like that, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's very concerning. And then it says some of the key components including our additional monitoring of current budgets, implementing a zero-based budgeting for 2017 and 18, and developing financial management policies. The plan is to be reviewed semi-annually by council for progress and to update or set additional priorities. And then this sentence here, the vision of the insolvency turnaround plan is for staff on a daily basis to ensure that the goals of the plan are addressed. Is, are we working on a, on a daily basis? That's... Sorry, you'll have to address the council on that. Okay. And we don't, during citizens' comments, we don't have interaction, but the council members can, um, if they so choose, for, look further into any item that is brought to us and sponsor an item and so choose. Okay, so I can kind of, I can get with some folks later and find out about that. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. 
Any other citizens' comments? Yes, sir. No. Mayor, Council, Fred Gonzalez, Floresville. I don't know if what I had is pertinent or timely. I don't say that often, right? Uh, or whether you already intend to cover it in your discussion, discussion topic. I think we can agree, though, that when we, where we vote, can make a difference in the outcome, particularly when changes are made in the voting sites, and these create challenges for us. I just have a few questions on that, and this can be answered during your discussion period if you can. Uh, who decides for Floresville residents vote? By what authority? Has that decision already been made? Is it irreversible? Did the city, meaning the council, have any say so? For me, I would hope that you can find it uh, the best way to go to stay where we were before, and that is at City Hall for Floresville residents. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Any other citizens' comments? Okay. If not, we move on to item one, which is our public hearing. This is to inform the general public of water system improvements project. This meeting is being held at the request of the funding agency, USDA Rural Development, to acquaint all interested parties on economic and environmental impact, service area, and alternative regard alternative regarding the proposed water system improvements. Ms. Turner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, and this notice was put in the uh, publication. Hold on. You need to speak the time here. Oh, okay. open the this here. public hearing is open at 6, uh, 6.08. Thank you. So this notice is provided application that the City of Floresville, the Council has approved for us to apply for an application and the proposed U.S. funding for the Plaza Well and Water System Improvements would include the Plaza Well Replacement Project and the description is, the City of Floresville is planning to construct a new groundwater well to replace the existing plaza well. This project is recommended for replacement of existing plaza well because it is inoperable currently. The proposed well will be located at the same production site as the existing plaza well. This project will include drilling the new well. Service includes revised water line piping at the production site in connection to the water distribution system at the plaza. The second component of this application is Oak Hills Interconnect, which you have discussed previously. The City of Floresville is planning to design a water main interconnect to receive water supply from Oak Hills Water Supply Corporation. Currently, our attorney is working on an interlocal agreement between us and Oak Hills. We've met several times in reference to this project. This project is recommended in order to supplement future demand of water, as well as provide a backup source of supply for planned maintenance events at the B Street well or any other wells that we have that we need to rehab. And last, but currently not least, the B Street well re rehab project is recommended to, as part of the city plan. B Street is well in order to satisfy proactive routine maintenance and offset any access management that needs to be done to this well. This project includes pulling the well pump, column pipe, and other related appendages, followed by cleaning and inspecting all parts of the well. I believe that well is between eight to 10 years old and has not been serviced, uh, taken offline to be serviced since it was uh, installed. And so those are the components, Mayor and City Council, that we're asking for this next application uh, for the USDA. Does Council have any questions of me in reference to the application process? This will be taken care of through Langford Community Management Services, or am I looking correctly at this? No, ma'am, this is actually uh, MNS, our water engineer, would be our engineer in reference to that. The link that we refer to there is our APA application for grants. Um, actually, uh, you have been online to do things electronically for the USDA. We have a representative uh, project manager, Helen. Uh, Helen has been very uh, cooperative in getting everything online. So this is a different type of application. Uh, the federal government is trying not to kill as many trees. And so everything now is electronically in the mirror. I know uh, you've worked with Betty Soto on the phone to be able to get online to do these things online. Any questions by the council, Councilman Nissen? Yeah, this well's been down a year and a half now. 
Yes, sir. I'll see you. Okay, and so that means the other well has went eight and a half years without any maintenance? Correct. Okay, what is your normal maintenance schedule on our wells? It should be between three to five years. So the question is, why didn't our water person not do it? Because they didn't have, we never had the funding to take it off line to service it. It was part of the original one that we have now with the meters, but we had to remove that once Plaza Well went offline. We had to take that out of our production because we have to have at least two wells up uh, to meet our minimum requirements to provide water. Okay, so if they didn't have funding three to five years ago, which takes back seven years, that's when all the money was coming in from this oil business. Do we have an explanation where all that money went? I'm talking 2013. I really can't explain anything that happened prior to 2013. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments by our council? If not, any citizens' comments? Okay. If not, our public hearing on the uh, general public uh, water system improvements project it is now concluded at 6:13. Okay, I'd like to, okay, let's go ahead and move on to item 2A, which is consideration action to approve the minute, the minutes of our regular council meeting on July 26, 2018. Council, you've had in your packet, I hope you've had a chance to look over the minutes of that meeting. If you feel any changes are needed, I will let you look over real quickly or for a few minutes. Three boxes, excuse me, will be, be in 
and for the counties, okay, but within the city of Florida. Okay. And just yeah. to clarify, this agreement uh, is only for uh, to, to hold the joint. We would not be sharing ballots or boxes or anything like that. The city would run their own election. Yes. And the county um, contract the county to run the school district. So that is correct. Elections. And basically how we've done it before. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we actually even had a discussion as to if the city so chose to be at City Hall for any early election, then what would that mean on election day? And I think that everybody determined, and correct me if I'm wrong, or, uh, Mr. Atkins, but since we will be taking up space at the county buildings, the three entities will share uh, whatever the fees are for those buildings. Is that pretty good? Okay. Yes. Okay. Any questions by the council? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman can't you first and then Councilman yes. So what you're saying is that in election day, we're not going to be voting, not everybody's going to vote at City Hall? Correct. On election day, we will have to be present with the county at their polling places. As long as uh, the polling places that we have to be present at, is they have to be within the City of Forestville. Okay. So yes, my understanding is that one of the places is going to be the American Legion Hall. So we will have to be present there. Okay. Is everybody going to vote at the American Legion Hall, or only some? No, it's your precinct. Yeah, they will be See, because there. the city ah. doesn't have a precinct. I mean, the city itself. We're at large. Right. But so. basically, the Secretary of State, my understanding, what they're trying to do is get everybody to be at the same location eventually. That's what Mr. Atkins and Olga and I thought, that that is the long plan. That's the future plan. And it's basically just to try to uh, make it better for the voters and easier access and stuff of that nature. They're still working on all of that, and I think that that is how the city is able to still do early voting at City Hall. Okay. Councilman Mason, you are next. So, my question to both, since we had it at the county last year, it was $21,000, and we're going to have early voting at the City Hall, and you have to have three people there, for the nine days, and we're going to have to have some machines there. The basic price is going to be an extra seven thousand bucks. That seven thousand will be shared by school, city, and who's the third person? The school, the city, and the school district. But not but the only thing that's going to be shared is going to be for election day. For election, so. We're on our own. If we decide to do it at City Hall, we will do that on our own for early voting. And the only thing that would be shared is if the county is having to pay the rent yes. for the election spot on election day. I don't well, there's not an election day, though. Yes, and so we'll be subject to the extra, with 11 days of three people, our own bill at City Hall, so we'll increase it by 7000 from last year, basically. If that is something that the council chooses to do, then that is a possibility. Okay. Yes, Councilman Jimenez. Well, we have our own microphone. Machine. We have our own machines. We don't have any. Uh, nobody else uses our machines whenever they're at City Hall. I do okay. know that we, we do have our own machines, but we'll have to do some programming on those machines. And my understanding is that they're actually asking us to take possession of those machines okay. as soon as possible. We don't okay. those machines. Okay, now we're actually straying from what is actually on the I agenda. Don't. So this, uh, the item is to approve a joint election agreement with the FIISD for 2018. We will get back for the with the discussion on the election in just a moment. Any questions pertaining to the interlocal agreement with the FIISD? Okay, so, any? so by agreeing to this, you're saying that on election day, we don't have a choice. We have to unite all three of us. According to the Secretary of State, on election day, we have to be present for the county polling places around, as long as they are located within the city of Florida. And that, and that is whether we sign this agreement or not. Yes. So whether we That's sign correct. this or not, we have to do it on election yes. day. We have to be present so, with them. So we're focusing on the interlocal agreement with Florida Independent School District. And we will discuss the other in just a moment. Okay, any questions that, that pertaining to the- I'll make a motion to sign. That's a good presentation. That is for a 
Oh, sorry. She skipped all the rest. Okay. All right. I'm going back to that. We're going back to that in just a moment. I have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, joint election agreement with FIASD for 2018 November general election. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Nissen. Any citizens' comments pertaining to this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this one here is for us just to have an agreement for election day, correct? No. This is the interlocal agreement between the City of Floresville and the Floresville Independent School District to work together on election, on ele on election period. Early voting, everything. No. That, that's, that's, that, that's where the confusion, I think, is with. No, this is just to, right. on election day, we have inter okay, it's election the day. The same that you used to do. Correct, that's right. Yeah, we have a requirement to hold yes. a joint election. Okay. And so, with another entity, whether right. it's a city, county, or something. Right. Uh, and since we have annual elections in November, and the city has annual elections in November, we choose to work with the city. Uh, all of this does is this is an agreement by law I have to have to prove that I had a joint election. And really, the only thing, there's no cost for anything involved other than. Uh, on election day, I have to have a common polling place to present the definition of joint election. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. The, the confusion here, I think, is where uh, one thinks that if it's with the uh, FISD, it's going to be in the common, but it's not. During general, not election day, the primaries, we can have it at City Hall. No. You voted it. We can have early voting. Right. At City Hall. Yes. That's, that's what I mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Early go ahead. Yes. It's not election. Yes. Election day is the last day where the vote, Chilean votes and votes. Yes, sir. Okay. Primaries, uh, early voting is yes, early, sir. of course. Okay. Yes, sir. There's the, the, the confusion there. Right, right, right. So, in election day, they, they need a, a, a partner. Yes, sir. Okay. They, they are mandated. Right. That they have but we don't, we can vote at our place. Early voting. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's so just get voting. that straight. Early voting, we can do it at City Hall. Election day, we must do it outside City yes. Hall. Yes, yes. We have to be right. at the common polling right. places if the county has a set or vote okay. within the city. Yes, okay. Sir. Then my question is, if it isn't like before, if the city goes to the county, the city stays in City Hall, the school goes to City Hall with us, the school goes to City Hall, I mean, to, to the county with us. Are we just talk? Is this just for election day, or is this for early voting? And no, it's just for election day. I only have to have a common voting place on okay. election day. Okay. 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 Yes. okay, but on the early voting, it's going to be another voting uh, agenda, Some, something else on the agenda, because this is only for election, election day. Yes. Yes. It is only for election day. That is correct. That is. Okay. And Get it to us. And, and pretty much Mr. Atkins is an expert. Right. He's been doing this for, right. it's, for over 20 years. So. Okay. okay, so I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Jimenez. Are you clear, Councilman? Do you want to keep it the way that you have it? Okay. I, I guess we need to stipulate this if, uh, if, this, if it's only for that agreement. We need, it, to, we need to stipulate that. It, it actually it, does have it, it in the agreement. It will tell you that it, is, it relates to the supervision <coughs> of ISD FISD election on Tuesday, November 6, 2018. That's actually in the top paragraph of the whole agreement. That's the first paragraph. Right under where it says chapter 271, yes. and then the next but sentence starts with I'm election on Tuesday, done. November 6, 2018. Okay, but we're not going to vote this time on, but we're going to vote our? No, this is basically a partnership. A partnership with okay. Floresville Independent School District to partner with them. They have to partner with someone okay. for election day, okay. Okay. meaning November 6, 2018. Okay. Any other questions? Councilman, you still have a motion on the floor. Do you want to hold it just as you as you have it? Yes. Okay, I have a, I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Jimenez. I have a, do I have a seconded by Councilman Nissen? All those in favor, please raise your hand right hand. Thank you, 5-0. Thank you very much. Okay, moving back. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. 
Thank you, Mr. Atkins. Uh, going back to item 3A, our wastewater system improvements. We have Mr. Larry Heimer with Stantec. Mr. Hyper here from Sentec, but he also has representatives. Mr. Hyper, can you introduce the representatives? Sure. Uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, first of all, the contractor, Pepper Lawson, uh, the project manager is Daniel Porter, and their project engineer is Shane Johnson. And then I've also had with me tonight uh, uh, Mr. Martin, Gary Martin, who's been our resident project representative working for Stantec, who's been at the site every day the contractor is working on that project. He provides the city and USDA daily reports and photographs of progress of the project since it started. Uh, the, the project started basically back in the very early part of January of last year when construction started. The, the planning and design for the project started probably two years earlier than that. But uh, construction started in early January of last year and we're planning to be complete or scheduled to be complete by next month. Right now we're substantially complete with all the major improvements and we're going through a process now to uh, run tests, make sure everything is operating properly. We've got to do the conversion of flow from your existing plant into the new plant. So that process is going to probably take another 30 days or so to complete. So uh, we're, we're, at, we're at the very end of the project. Uh, I think it's, I think Pepper Lawson has done a good job and Gary Martin has, has watched over what they did and has kept track of what they're doing. And so I think we feel very good that you're getting a good plant. Uh, the plan is, is uh, basically the largest of two plants that have been built in the state of Texas. Uh, the city of Castroville has just in the process of completing a, a plant about half the size with the same technology that we're using here at Floresville. But this is by far the largest plant of this type, which has a uh, carousel system that provides additional treatment for phosphorus removal and nitrogen removal, which is requirements for new permits now for plants. So uh, you have a plant that's uh, low maintenance, the, the, the large concrete bases that you may have seen as you drive by are, are designed basically to provide uh, operators, you know, enough flexibility, very low maintenance. It, it basically is uh, the aerators move, their vertical aerators are not like the current racetrack that you have now that requires continual maintenance. And so the plan has been designed to minimize operator uh, you know, issues related to it as a project which is, you know, has a life probably of 40 or 50 years. And the plant, uh, if you recall, we've talked about this before, you're currently permitted for 900,000 gallons per day, but that permit is grandfathered and it'll, it, it doesn't require all the, the new requirements that TCQ has now for new plants. You know, basically, uh, you've had problems with your plant over the last few years under heavy rainfall events and you've had some issues with TCQ. But this plant uh, is designed for average daily flow of 1.25 million gallons per day and has a, also a capacity to handle a peaking factor of four where your existing plant does not have that peaking factor. So uh, this new plant should alleviate any concerns you'll have or any problems you'll have with TCQ as far as overflows for the very foreseeable future. Uh, the plant is, uh, as I said, it's, it started construction in, in early January and we'll be hoping or think it'll be tied and finished up and in service by sometime next month. And we'll be going through the next month. Uh, we'll be scheduling uh, pre-final and final inspections with the USDA staff and going through all their requirements to close out a project of this type. So uh, at this point in time, uh, we've, we've, we have the funds to complete the project. Uh, we are holding back a contingency amount until everything is functional and operational and then uh, we will then at that point in time, since we're working on grant funds now, that money is basically free money, we, we're going to, our plan is to uh, add a kind of realign the driveway coming into the plant because right now the, the, the sludge trucks that come in and out to carry the, the waste out of the plant have this very difficult maneuver to get into the plant and so our plan is uh, if funds are available, which they appear to be, to use from the grant uh, to, to add that to the project at the very end of the project. So uh, we're just going to, at this point in time, waiting to go through and make sure everything is functioning properly, and then we'll make that decision to utilize the rest of those funds working with city staff so that all the grant money can be used. Basically, the city has, been, has used the loan funds and the, the way the project uh, was, hand, was, was, was programmed out. The, the loan funds were used initially, and then the grant funds are the last funds that are used for the completion of the project. 
So uh, that's uh, basically where we are on the project. We, we have enough money in case there is any changes that have to be made. But again, we hope that at the end of this final testing, we can go ahead and add the, uh, the real line driveway.